All right, let's work on an optimization problem. In this one, we have a box with a square base and open top must have a volume of 108,000 cubic centimeters. We wish to find the dimensions of the box that minimize the amount of material used. Also, we want to find the minimum surface area. So with each one of these, always try to draw yourself a picture. Um, I've done my best on drawing an open top box here. Next, what I'd like to do is I always try to label the sides. So on this one, we know that it has a square base that was given to us. So I'm going to label the sides as being X and X across the base. And then we also have a height. Doesn't have to be a perfect cube here. That height could be bigger than the base uh, dimensions or smaller. We really don't know, but I'm going to label my sides. Next up, we want to both construct a constraint equation, which usually comes from some number that's given to us. <clears throat> and then we want to create an objective function. This is whatever we're trying to maximize or minimize. So first of all, the constraint equation. We are told that the volume must be 108,000 cubic centimeters. Now with a box, um, what we want to do is to calculate the volume, that's going to be given by length times width times height. So length times width times height. So we want to represent this using the variables that we already have over there. So we have 108,000 is going to have to equal our length times width times height, or that could be written as x squared over on the right hand side. So x squared times h. All right, so we have our constraint equation. We've simplified down as much as we can right now. Next, we want to create an objective function. So on this one, we want to um, find the dimensions that minimize the amount of material used. So as we're trying to minimize the amount of material, what that means is that's another way to say the surface area. Basically the area of each one of the sides and the bottom of our box. So if we want to draw this out, it's kind of like if you cut this box all apart and it fell, fell down, it would basically be sides and then a square base. And this may not be drawn to specifications for this, but it is a square base, which has X's on both sides. And then our sides each have X on the bottom and H on the side, like going up. All right, so to calculate the surface area, we're gonna have four sides multiplied by whatever this area is, plus one base. We don't have a top on this box, remember. So we can say our surface area is gonna be given by four multiplied by the area of a rectangle, just uh, base times height or length times width, however you wanna visualize it. So four X times H's plus one x times x or x squared. Okay, so now we have the function, the surface area function that we would like to minimize. To minimize this, you may notice on the right hand side, we have both x's and h's currently. We're going to use our constraint equation on the left hand side, solve that down for one of our variables and plug it into the surface area function. I think it's going to be easiest if we choose to solve that left equation down for h. So we'll move the x squared to the other side by dividing. So that gives us h on the right hand side all by itself. Next, we can bring our surface area function along. We're going to replace the h with 108,000 divided by x squared. So we substituted in there using h equals 108,000 divided by x squared. From here, let's do a little bit of reducing down. So just moving over here. We eventually want to take the derivative, but if we can make this look a little bit nicer, we can, we can make taking the derivative a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to visualize this as being over one. So we have four times 108,000 makes 432,000. And then we have an X in the denominator and an X in the numerator, actually two X's in the denominator. So one of those can cancel out with the X that's up in the numerator. So this will put this over X. 
plus x squared. From here, let's rewrite it and move this x to the positive first power from the denominator up to the numerator by making it negative. A nice trick that's going to allow us not to pull out the uh, product rule, we can just use the power rule. All right, so now we wanna take the derivative. So utilizing the power rule, we're gonna bring the exponent down, multiply it by the 432,000 and reduce it by one. So negative one minus one makes negative two. Again, power rule, bring the two down, reduce it by one. So that'll be two X to the first power. And now we can get, um, we can find critical numbers by setting the derivative equal to zero and solving down. So set it equal to zero, 432,000. At this point, I'm gonna to elect to move that back down and make it a positive exponent. You may not choose to do it that way, but I think that's probably the easiest way for me to visualize it. Now to solve for this, I'm gonna first move the two X to the other side. So subtract two X from both sides, negative 432,000 over X squared. And we can't really solve for X while it's in the denominator. So let's multiply both sides by X squared. Multiplying and dividing both on the same side by x squared, should get some nice canceling out. So now we have negative two x cubed as we combine those x's together equals negative 432,000. We can make this into a power equation by moving the two to the other side. So divide both sides by negative two. So we're gonna end up with x cubed equals 216,000. And to get rid of this cube, we're gonna apply a cube root to both sides. That's equivalent to raising both sides to the one third power. And that may be a little bit easier to get in your calculator as you're probably gonna use that to help you do this computation anyway. So eventually we end up with the cube root of 216,000 is 60. And our dimensions are going to be in centimeters because our volume was in cubic centimeters. All right, now that we found X, let's see if that's everything we needed or if we actually need to answer another question. So we wish to find the dimensions of the box that minimize the amount of material use and then also find the minimum surface area. Just to double check here what we ended up with that X equals 60 centimeters. Let's double check to make sure that that actually is going to be a minimum. So to do so, what I'm gonna do, elect to do is go back to our surface area, derivative, and I'm using this version right here. Let's apply the second derivative test as a check. So the second derivative is gonna be again, using the power rule that we're going to bring that negative two down in front and figure out two times 432,000 is gonna be 864,000 X to the negative third, as we reduce the exponent by one plus two. The derivative of two X is just gonna be plus two. All right, now we wanted to test this at our value for X. Our value for X here was 60. So let's evaluate this at 60, 864,000 divided by 60 cubed plus two. Now, since everything's positive here, this is overall gonna end up being a positive, all right? Because that's positive, when we plugged our 60 into the second derivative, that implies that this is gonna be concave up. All right, it has to have this sort of look going on our graph. Because it's concave up, that's gonna have a minimum. So we can be really sure that X equals 60 centimeters is going to be our minimum. All right, to finish this up, let's find the dimensions. Um, so the dimensions here, our box is gonna be 60, 60, and then our height, we can compute that by going down here to our height function, our constraint equation, I should say. And we know that our height can be computed by plugging a 60 in there. 
So it's going to be 108,000 over 60 squared. It's going to be our height. So 108,000 divided by 60 squared is going to be 30. And again, in centimeters. So 60 by 60 by 30. And the very last thing we're going to do here is find the minimum surface area. So to find the minimum surface area, we'll use our surface area function. And you could use this version or after you made it all in terms of X's, either version will work out just fine. But our surface area, where can I go here, is 4XH plus X squared. Surface area is 4XH plus X squared. Um, we're going to plug in and get this minimum surface area by doing 4 times 60 times 30 plus 60 squared. 4 times 60 times 30 plus 60 squared. So our minimum surface area is going to be 100 or 10,800 square centimeters. Um, I didn't include my units, but this will be centimeters, this will be centimeters, this will be centimeters times itself. So that's where our square centimeters come as units. All right, I hope this helps out on trying to minimize surface area. I know that these can be very challenging problems to a lot of students. Um, just work with it, draw a picture, label the sides, always try to get a constraint equation and an, an objective function. The constraint equation is going to be some number that's included in the word problem. And the objective functions, whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize. It takes working with these to get really confident about it, but do your best. Um, keep working on it. You can do it.